Acorns is probably the easiest to use investing app, period, in history. You don't even have to pick your own stocks. But is that simplicity the limiting factor that's caused me to lose several thousand dollars personally? If that's the case, should I then move the 25 grand I have invested with Acorns somewhere else, like Weeble or M1 Finance? Today we're gonna find out because I'm gonna compare my Acorns returns over the last about two years to my returns I've gotten on M1 Finance to see what would have made me the most money. I started way back when with Acorns because my sister called me up one day and said, what's the the best investing app for like a total beginner. I know nothing. It's got to be super simple. I don't need to study finance for a year or two to prepare. Like just give it to me straight. What's the thing I should use? And so I scoured the internet, all the investing apps on the app store, all the investing apps I could find online or websites or whatever. And I discovered that so many of them are poorly designed or they're confusing or they overwhelm you with too much information. And so it actually makes you not want to use it because there's too much going on. And then finally I discovered Acorns. The Acorns app in contrast just looked so clear and so helpful that I had to try it. I downloaded it, I set it up, had some automatic transfers get going every week. And that was back in early 2020. At that time, the app was only $1 per month and so it was like almost free, seemed like a total no brainer. After testing it for a little while, I told my sister, hey, Acorns is the place to be. So she started using it. And then in the months following, I continued to use it. I mean, why not? So my account was growing and growing as I both contributed more money and as the stock market climbed and climbed. It was a really good time to be an investor. Fast forward two and a half years later and a bunch of things have changed. Number one, the stock market is way down. That stinks. Number two, Acorns raised their prices and it now costs at least $3 per month or if you want all the features, $5 per month. Acorns also added ESG investing, which I switched to. They added a Bitcoin ETF, which I invested in for some reason. I made a video about it up here and I started investing in it, but you can tell by my tone of voice, I'm not super stoked on it. They also announced a future individual stock picking feature that's yet to roll out. It's not happening yet. It's supposed to happen this year. Where is it, Acorns? Let us know. And all those positive returns I'd been getting, 10, 15, 20% turned upside down. I went from making a whole lot of profit in the form of just gains every year to now losing that same amount. You know what, let's see where I stand right now. Wow, I just said I had 25,000. I'm down to 22,840. I was at 25. Okay, so as you can see right here, my all-time gains or losses are a minus 21.66%. Probably a little bright for you. Negative 21.66%. Yikes, that's pretty nasty. And that results to a net loss of $6,300. Yeesh. The first question that we have to answer now is, is the reason why I lost several thousand dollars due to Acorns picking the wrong things for me to invest in. And I think it's kind of fair to say that Acorns picked investments that went down in value. Like there's no real way around that. I didn't pick these, Acorns picked them, and they've plummeted. In a literal sense, they are to blame. For example, I chose the riskiest possible portfolio made up of ESG stocks, and then for some reason opted into their Bitcoin investing service too. Here's what's in that mix right now in case you want to get really nerdy, but the long and the short of it is that it's a whole bunch of different ETFs that spread out investments across America and the world. And there's also 5% BITO, which is their Bitcoin ETF. Let's go over how it's performed more recently. So in the last one day, <laughs> <laughs> in the last one day, I've lost 1%. In the last month, I've lost 8.4. In the last three months, I've lost 8%. In the last year, I'm down 23%. And then my last five years or all is the same because it's been less than five years. Does your investment portfolio with Acorns look similar to this? Are you seeing these kinds of big losses too? Well, as bloody and terrible as that is, whenever I really think about what these investments are made up of and how diverse they are, I think it's not an irresponsible mix, if that makes sense. The investments they've chosen also have relatively low fees, and so that's not a terrible thing either. What we're talking about is betting on the biggest and most successful companies in the world continuing to be the best companies in the world, continuing to be profitable. So in a shallow sense, I do wish Acorns had picked other ETFs, but I don't think it's a bad mix overall. And I am partially to blame because I'm in cahoots with them. I opted into this portfolio, so I chose that. But what if I'd chosen within Acorns differently? That's the second question we need to answer. What if I'd picked a more moderate or conservative portfolio instead? That's how Acorns breaks this stuff out. They give you multiple options in terms of risk, like conservative, moderately conservative, aggressive, all this different stuff. So what if instead of going for the big gains, I'd pick something more conservative? I went to PortfolioVisualizer.com to go back in time and test my portfolio versus those other two options to find out. So I went in there and put in my current portfolio to say this is what I'm investing in now. And then 
I compared it to the Acorn's aggressive non-ESG portfolio. So that's kind of the first test. Did ESG take me down the wrong road or not? And then I also tested it against their conservative portfolio, which is like tons and tons and tons of bonds. It's basically all bonds. For the time frame I put in, the, basically the last two years and the initial amount, I just had to throw something in there to get it started. So I said I invested a thousand bucks right off the bat. And then let's just for testing purposes say that I contribute $200 a month every month from 2020 until today. And Portfolio Visualizer is nice enough to give you like a little breakdown to say, hey, this is what you're investing in. Here's the different sectors, yada, 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 nerdy stuff. Now we get to what we're really looking for, which is what are the returns? Now this was very interesting to me because as it turns out, whether or not I went with ESG made very little difference. If you have no idea what I'm talking about with ESG after this video, then I'll leave you a link for a video at the end of this one to click on so you can learn more about that. But it basically just means that companies are trying to do good in the world. As it turns out, the difference was minimal. I mean, it was almost no difference whatsoever. If you look down here at this little line chart, you can see that both aggressive portfolios are basically right in line with each other. I mean, they're like a mirror image of each other. And two years isn't like the longest time frame to test this kind of stuff out, but it's long enough to go, hey, if there was a big difference, we would see it. There's not a huge difference. Over the course of 10, 20, 30 years, maybe the difference will be bigger. But for right now, whether or not you're doing ESG or not, it doesn't make a huge difference. What does make a big difference is that little flat line that's sitting below that squiggly one. That's the conservative one. That line represents the conservative portfolio with acorns and the returns you'd be getting if you would use that one. And the really interesting thing is that even though it's way less variable than the other two. It's not going up and down all crazy like those are. The real end return of it is actually like zero, which pretty much means that it's no better than like a piggy bank. Now, as of right now, as I'm making this video, the bond rates have been going up. And so if you were investing in it now and you just wanted something like really secure, there's a chance that for a short term, at least you'd be doing a lot better than the stock market. Like you might be getting plus three or 4% where the stock market is still negative. But in the long run, I think what we're going to see is that these aggressive portfolios drastically outperform that conservative one. What I can see here at the end of the portfolio visualizer report is that the total return for the full time period that we looked at is basically 6% for the two aggressive portfolios and 0% for the conservative one. The difference between what portfolio visualizer shows and what my account shows is just because it's counting it in full years where this can count like the moment that I started investing. And so this is giving us a little bit bigger of a time frame on the portfolio visualizer one. And so it's giving me a little bit more favorable results to say I'm still up 6% where this is down 20 plus percent. But where does that leave us now? I think there's something crucial that we need to remember about these numbers on the screen. Paper losses aren't real losses. The losses that you see right here are called paper losses because they are theoretical. They're still tied up in the investment themselves. And so the value of the investment has gone down, but it doesn't mean you'll never see the money again. I can only stop that process and lock in the losses if I sell the investments and turn them back into dollars again. Just like in the opposite direction, if the value of the investment goes up, I haven't necessarily made money yet. Once you sell, you do lock that in and you stop the movement. So you can take your losses or take your gains and then you're actually sealing in what's happened. But until then, I think there's still a very good chance that the value of these investments will go back up, will level out and will go back into the positive again. But it would have been nice to avoid these losses in the first place. And what I want to know is if Acorns would have rolled out that feature where I could have chosen my own stocks to invest in, could these negative returns have been avoided? To find that out, we have to answer question number three, which is, should I move to an another investment company and pick my own stuff instead because, hey, I can do a better job. I don't need these guys to give me an ETF. I'll do what I want. I could stop these losses. Let's fact check over a similar time period how good my judgment is versus the basic ETFs that Acorns puts together. This first account is a mix of a bunch of different things that were part investments I chose as just investments, and they were part an emergency fund that I rolled over from Ally back in the day when I decided not to invest with Ally anymore. So it's an eclectic mix. It's basically all index funds, and they all had kind of a different reason for being whenever I picked them. But as you can see overall, my returns are not much better. Minus 21%. So it's not quite as bad as Acorns, but it's really close. It's, it's right up there. Let's check a different portfolio and see how much better I do elsewhere. This one is my SEP IRA. And if you're a business owner or if you are kind of a sole proprietor in any way, you should really check out an SEP IRA because it's a great way to save for retirement. It's a great way to save money on taxes. Because it's an IRA, because the money's gonna sit here for like 30 years, I wanted to set this up with a long-term mindset. And so the goal with each of these was to get some exposure to these different 
sectors to make sure that I don't miss out on any gains or I'm not too exposed in any one area. So I have like a total stock market index, but I also have a real estate ETF. I also have an international ETF and I have some bonds in there just to try and kind of level things out. As you can see, I'm also down 21%. Now this is really interesting. Somehow my wife's IRA that I set up for her and I picked the investments in is the best performing investment account we have by a long shot. All I really did with her was try and think, how would she want her money invested? Like, let's pretend like I'm gonna set this up and then I'm gonna die tomorrow and this needs to be set up for her for the rest of all time. How would I do that? And so I did that and she's just crushing us. So this account has gotten 6.49% gains in the last couple years, which is pretty amazing. Now the mix here isn't totally different. There's a bit more bond exposure. There's a bit more VTI, but overall she's crushing us. Part of the difference might be that she started a little bit earlier. This account started on 916 of 2019. And so she got a few months of a head start compared to these other accounts that I'm really comparing from like the beginning of 2020. And maybe that three month difference was really the big difference, but she's making more money than I am right now. So technically with M1 Finance, I did perform a little bit better than Acorns. I also have put more work into that and have had to make some decisions myself. And so if you really wanna be hands off and you really don't wanna have to do any thinking or any research on your own, I still think Acorns is a decent decision for you. I can't predict the future, but I can make good decisions now. And if I know that I don't want to get mixed up in picking the wrong thing, and I know that I just want to be able to send money to the account and not worry about it, I think Acorns is still a good idea. Overall, for me personally, I'm still investing as much money as I possibly can in the stock market because I'm bullish, if you will. I'm, I'm positive. I'm optimistic on the hope of the world and the world economies on being able to continue to grow. Overall, so far in the history of the stock market, for a hundred years, if you've invested for at least 20 years, you've made money. There's no time period where it's not been, if you've invested for 20 years, you've, you've lost money. It's just not happened. It hasn't never, ever, ever happened. So that's the kind of time horizon that I have and that I keep in mind and go, I think that we have reason to hope. Now, if you want to get really nerdy and deep dive into what it means to do ESG investing, you can click over here because it's a very nerdy video, but I went really deep and did a lot of research to figure out what that is. We could also all use more income so we can invest more. If you want to learn about passive income and how that really works, plus this little three-part framework that I devised myself and I'm really proud of, click on this video next. Hey, the secret comment word today is pain because it's painful to have investing losses even if they're just on paper. Plus it's painful to run 16 miles down a mountain like I did last weekend in a race. It was awesome, but my legs are in a lot of physical pain. They're fried. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you soon. Bye.